Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Star Bazaar and to the second installment of my advanced lightsaber tips series for Battlefront 2. Episode 1 did really well, and you guys seem to like the tips I gave in that one, so we're continuing from that first video and diving even deeper into the smaller nuances of lightsaber combat to help you step your game up a bit. If you missed episode 1, you can get to it from the card popping up on the screen now, or by clicking the link in the description. Also, if you're a new viewer, welcome! I hope you consider liking the video and subscribing for more Battlefront 2 content like this. But with the short intro out of the way, let's jump right into it and check out the first tip, breaking through force powers and abilities, and it involves a tip from episode 1. Maybe you've done this on accident before, where you're jumping away from an enemy, they'll try to hit you with an ability to knock you down, or a force power to bring you back to the ground, but you manage to do a jump attack just at the right time in midair, and you attack through the force power, leaving some sparks in the air and you landing safely. This is how you break through force powers and abilities, the jump attack. It's a very powerful tool that can not only hit your opponents from weird angles, it can also be used defensively like this. If you're jumping, then that can leave you exposed to getting pulled or pushed or hit by something else since you can't block in the air. By attacking in the air, the attack animation creates, for all intents and purposes, a momentary shield that can block force powers and enemy abilities like Grievous's Thrust Surge. It blocks only the effect of basically anything that would otherwise ragdoll you, but keep in mind that chances are you will still take damage from whatever you're getting hit by. The point of doing the jump attack is just so that you're not getting ragdolled and made an easy target afterwards. It's very powerful, and the timing is difficult, making this a fairly advanced move, but give it a try next time you see Anakin lining up to try to force pull you for example. Try to jump and swing your lightsaber and you just might avoid getting pulled. The way I see it, if you have the stamina and you're in trouble, using the jump attack while jumping away could be the best defense in that moment since you're creating space and avoiding enemy abilities at the same time. Next tip, use different dodge patterns. Dodging is a great tool with multiple uses, evasion, movement, even psyching your opponent out, and by figuring out different dodge patterns you can make the most of your dodges and make sure they're not going to waste. Unless you're playing as Count Dooku or an Infiltrator reinforcement, you only get two dodges at any time, so you have to be wise about how you use them. One of the worst things is getting cornered with no dodges to save you, so first thing to bring up here. When escaping danger, personally, I never use more than one dodge at a time unless I really really need to create some space. By using only one dodge at a time, I'll always have one in reserve just in case things look rough. But when it comes to patterns, you have to use at least two. Let me give you an example of a pattern that I really enjoy using. I call it the forward back dash. This is where, when facing off with an enemy lightsaber hero, I'll dash forward through them, give them a second to turn around, then once they turn, I'll quickly dodge backwards so now I'm facing their back, and then I'll get two quick shots into them. The pattern is a quick forward dodge followed by a backward dodge, and that's all. It's very basic, but the end result is powerful. Other patterns include a zigzag motion when closing the distance on a blaster hero or infantry. It isn't very smart to just run straight at them since they can line up and take you out before you get there. A swift zigzag movement, all while closing the distance, is a great pattern for taking care of gunslingers, since you can avoid damage and get close to attack them yourself all at once. Try a few different dodge patterns out and see if you can find a better way to trick your opponents. It's a great tool that has many uses. With these next two tips, we're getting into settings territory, and what I mean is that these are tips that involve the different game settings and what you can change to help give you a bit of an advantage. The first thing to bring up is your sensitivity. Obviously with a lower sensitivity you have more control, but chances are you'll be a lot slower. With a higher sensitivity you can turn much faster, but you also have less control if you're not used to the higher settings. High sensitivity is very helpful for lightsaber combat, since you can turn around fast to block an incoming attack, or to attack yourself when you see a quick opening. Similar to the dodge pattern tip, with a higher sensitivity you can do things like do a quick dodge forward through your enemy and then quickly turn around and hit their back before they can react. This is done with high sensitivity, but that does come with getting used to playing like that. Personally, I've been playing with about 30% sensitivity lately and it's working out great. 
but if you're trying to bump yours up, I recommend going up in increments. If you're currently at 20%, for example, try bumping it up to 23 or 25% and play with that setting for a little bit. Then once you're used to it, bump it up again and just keep repeating that process until you're at a setting that feels right. The next settings tip is one I just recently picked up from the stream the other day, and if you were the viewer who recommended it, shout out to you. I apologize, I honestly forgot who recommended it on the stream, but it worked wonderfully, so thank you. This tip is to turn off aim assist. I don't know why it never occurred to me before, but with aim assist turned off, you have complete control and freedom of movement with your lightsaber hero. Aim assist is a finicky little thing that I usually always have on to help with my gun game, but with lightsabers, I didn't realize how much it was holding me back until I turned it off. Aim assist helps you, quote, lock on to targets by keeping them in your sight and to a certain extent following them with the camera, which is good for one-on-one -on -one encounters, but this can sometimes hurt you in modes like heroes versus villains, where there are multiple attackers. When you're getting attacked by multiple people, the aim assist can only focus on one at a time, so you may end up fighting the aim assist if you're trying to focus on the other attackers. Also, sometimes the aim assist will pull your camera in a weird direction you don't want it to go, simply because an enemy moved across your line of vision. With lightsabers, you want as much freedom to move and turn as possible, and turning off aim assist will give you just that much more, so I highly recommend it. And the last tip for the video is just as much a tactical thing as it is flashy, and that is understanding damage values. If you know exactly how much damage each of your lightsaber attacks will do, you can know exactly how many times you need to swing your lightsaber in order to get the kill, and you won't be stuck doing two or three extra swings afterward, wasting stamina and leaving you open. This is a great tip for killstreaks in Galactic Assault, since when you spam swing on an enemy, you run the risk of leaving yourself open and getting shot by their teammates. By knowing how much damage you can do, and keeping in mind how much health the enemy has, you'll know exactly how many attacks you need to do and you won't waste stamina. On top of that, if you stop your attack sequence when you get the kill, you'll strike a sweet pose coming out of the combo. In Galactic Assault, just always remember that infantry have between 150 and 200 health, so it will take either one or two swings from your lightsaber to defeat them. Any more than that just wastes stamina, so you want to be counting every time you press the attack button. When I run up to a target, sometimes I'll say to myself, one, two, then move on and repeat. I do this because I know how much damage I need to do. I understand damage values. I recommend spending some time in arcade mode and trying out different heroes and seeing how much damage each one can do. That kind of knowledge can prepare you for multiplayer and will really help with killstreaks especially. But that is it for episode 2 of Advanced Lightsaber Tips in Battlefront 2. If you guys found any of these tips helpful, let me know in a comment below. Did you learn anything new? Like I said with the aim assist thing, I'm still figuring things out and finding new ways to win, and once I get a good list of those tips together, I'll be sure to share them with you in episode 3. But that's going to do it for this one. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, thank you for stopping by the bazaar, and I will see you all out on the battlefront. Peace.